Okay, uh, now for the difficult part. <laughs> uh, bringing all this desperate uh, and contradictory parts together to try and uh, bring a uh, more or less coherent narrative. Um, I said in my video um, on this uh, a week or so ago that I was perplexed or confused um, and I didn't deal in certitudes, but this is clearly not good enough for some people who want ready-made answers, and there are none. So firstly, ch regarding China, um, some things are clear to me about China. Firstly, that many, many more people died in Wuhan than the official statistics are telling us and that the Chinese are lying about this. Uh, what tells us this is the people collapsing on the streets, scenes from the hospitals, the crematoria working 24 seven, spewing smoke into the air and the missing 21 million cell phones. Apart from that, the statistics that are coming out of China uh, make absolutely zero sense and um, one would have to be the most kind of blind pro-Chinese Communist Party person to, uh, to believe them. So I have little doubt uh, that this was a bioweapon that came out of a P4 biolab in Wuhan and that the Gateses, the Fauci's, etc. They were all uh, involved in this uh, in this gain of function research for on, on the coronavirus. And then there's the whole question of event twenty two, uh, two uh, yeah two o one, and the military games in the Wuhan. So um, yeah, basically, if events in China are murky because of a lack of transparency and honesty from the Chinese Communist Party, they're even more murky now um, when the, now that the disease has come to the West. So it was my expectation that the medical systems in the West would become quickly overwhelmed and the early news uh, seemed to bear that out. Um, you know, we heard terrible stories about rest tone nursing home and uh, uh, just out of Seattle and, and various other stories. Um, however, uh, as time went on and just looking at things from a slightly different perspective when I was open myself up to hearing the, uh, the contrarian arguments, uh, yeah, it became clear to me that the numbers succumbing to what came to be known as COVID-19 were nowhere near what we were, uh, what we, ex what I expected, and what we were told would happen. So it seems to me that when both Neil Ferguson of Imperial College and Tony Fauci had put their reports in saying that there would be many hundreds of thousands, up to a million um, people killed um, in this virus on the desks of their respective leaders and scared, their, and scared them um, into taking the course of action. Uh, then they rolled back the numbers uh, in their computer models drastically. Um, yeah, and Fauci even said something in a published paper that he has never said publicly, uh, that COVID-19 might be nothing more than a bad case of the flu. So that's coming from the experts. But by that time, by this time, half the world is under some form of lockdown. Um, as for the hospitals being overwhelmed, I'm sure that this is true in part, and hospital staff were being overwhelmed. And we've seen numerous examples of this, possibly in smaller hospitals, I don't know. I do know that some hospitals, at least, 
uh, seem to be practically empty and staff were either unemployed or sent home. And um, I was able to see this uh, for myself at our local hospital uh, when we did a drive around last weekend. Um, and um, sorry, I'm just uh, getting this. Okay, so um, yeah, so we went on a on a uh, tour last uh, last Sunday um, of, uh, of of our local hospital uh, on the last weekend of level two uh, lockdown. So normally, this hospital, even on a Sunday, would be um, really busy, and uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a parking place. So as you can see from this um, photo, it's practically empty on the outside. And this is the main entrance. The main entrance uh, was, was locked. Both, uh, one said go to the other door. Uh, so the first door was locked and it said go to the second door and the second door was locked. And this was the sign um, that, uh, you know, was on the, um, on the entranceway, and uh, you can't quite see it here, but there's, it's absolutely deserted. There's nothing going on at all. So here we are, new visitors policy. No visitors unless in exceptional circumstances and by prior arrangement with the ward. No visitors under uh, 16 years old. Um, so, this is a view of the main entrance. There would always be people uh, kind of mulling around and you can't quite see in the photograph, um, but I could see beyond those doors. That's the main vestibule. That's the main entrance to the hospital, the reception, etc. Absolutely dead. And then when I went around, um, to the uh, uh, the entrance to the emergency department, I came across this chap who's a security guard, and you had to get past him to get into the emergency department. And he very kindly <laughs> let me take a photograph of him. Uh, so over this period, I can think that I, I think that only one or two at the most uh, uh, COVID patients have been treated at the hospital, while uh, obviously there's practically nothing going on elsewhere and visitors are excluded. And of course, there was no way that I could have got into the hospital um, to uh, check this out. Um, so, there are so many things about this lockdown that just don't make sense to me. Uh, it makes perfect sense to me that vulnerable populations, if, you know, if, if, if there's a major sort of outbreak, if, if, if there is indeed an uh, epidemic, especially if it's a bloody bioweapon, uh, it makes sense that vulnerable populations, especially the elderly, would be protected. Um, but it doesn't seem to make so much sense, uh, especially kind of as things have turned out, um, that the entire population should be locked down, essentially in, uh, on house arrest, be denied the very things that would boost their immune systems and protect them from infection, sun, exercise, and human touch. So if people were dropping like flies, this course of action might be justified. And uh, kind of at the beginning, this is what I expected might need to, to happen. But in this country, at least it was nothing like what we were told it might be. And of course, uh, now that we, uh, I, I watched the, the numbers go up sort of exponentially and then very, very quickly uh, they went down so that it was only one or two uh, cases, and of course that was all put down to uh, the success of the of 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 the lockdown. So, whereas maybe it's just a 
uh, an indication that the disease is not, either that it's not real or uh, perhaps that we have a less virulent um, version of this disease here. So the government spent a couple of months just letting people waltz into the country uh, on, on planes, on uh, cruise ships, etc. Well, those are the only ways into the country, actually, because uh, New Zealand is a couple of islands uh, far away from everyone else. So it would have been quite simple, in my mind, uh, to just close the borders and keep the numbers down from the outset, and we wouldn't have been in this mess. And we would be like these countries, mostly in the third world, where even today there are no cases. So now we're being asked to congratulate the government, which allowed the whole thing to spread like wildfire. Um, and it turned out to be a, uh, a bit of a nothing anyway. Um, and then congratulate them because they've managed to, uh, you know, to save us from this terrible fate. So I so strongly suspect it was political and geopolitical considerations that stopped the government already weighted at the hip with globalist agendas and institutions, with the Gates Foundation and so on, with the World Health Organization, Dr. Ted Ross, and the list goes on. So the government obviously would not take any actions that went against the dictates of Dr. Ted Ross and the WHO, and they would certainly not do anything to upset the Chinese Communist Party. So on the one hand, we had a government that had to tread carefully so as not to upset its number one trading partner, China, which has a stranglehold over just about every aspect of life in this country. Uh, it's also committed to the very worst aspects of the globalist new world agenda uh, and everything that goes with it, and not least, of course, to the five eyes of which we are a member. So New Zealand, um, this is taking a very kind of um, positive spin. Um, what it has to do is to balance between China and America with the complicating factor that of, tr of President Trump against whom the, uh, the deep state, the entirety of the international community, the media and so forth is implacably opposed to. So there are so many aspects of this that could be talked about, but I come back to what I said in my introduction, that I now see this more as a plague of corruption or a pandemic of corruption than a, a pandemic or a plague. And um, I strongly suspect that we have an agenda driven by people such as Bill Gates and his minders uh, to lock down entire populations and not free them from this until they have been vaccinated, and made sick or die during, uh, due to the toxic ingredients in vaccines in combination uh, with 5G. And I just watched an interesting uh, video uh, which posited the hypothesis, because it's unprovable, that perhaps uh, the uh, the test kits are the new vaccine, and that's why they're so desperate now. When they weren't wanting to test anybody, uh, you know, a month, month and a half ago, now everyone has to be tested. So why is that? So that was an interesting idea uh, that I don't either subscribe or not subscribe to. So anyway, whatever, whatever's happening, it's no longer theoretical. Uh, but it's real and it's happening at great speed. Uh, and that takes me into a whole uh, new realm uh, that I don't want to get into uh, right now. I don't want to complicate things. But please, please take this just for what it is. And that's a reflection and an attempt to make sense of things. And above all, watch this space, watch my blog, watch very carefully what is happening things are moving very fast. And I have to tell you, I have no crystal ball. 
but I do have my suspicions and a huge sense of unease about this all. So this is uh, Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. <laughs>